Thank you very much to invite me, dear students, guests, and colleagues of the Symposium of 50 Years of Electronic Music and Audiovisuals at Folkwang University of the Arts. My colleague Michael asked me to prepare a kickoff lecture for the topic What is the relationship between electronic music today and the avant garde of the 1950s and 60s? And which predictions from that time come true? and which not. When I started to think about it, it was clear that it can become a very extensive thing. So I start first with the basics of the development of electronic music. Since I give the first lecture in the series, the historical positioning of electronic music might not be a, such a bad idea for the following discussions. And what could be more appropriate here than to look at the development of the radio in relationship to electronic music? My focus is on the development after 1945 and especially on the development of radio in Northern Westphalia. First of all, I taught others what they think about electronic music and found an article in Wikipedia. I will quote, the importance of radio as a medium of first achieve political goals and later on the entertainment and pave the way for broadcasting of music. Now I want to play a small film. On the tone. I'd like to just dwell on just a bit, and that is the question of the dehumanization in, in contemporary music that some people have been talking about. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I mean it specifically of electronic music, yeah. that the medium itself is dehumanized, like, you yeah. know, the sine wave and yeah. the others are very bare, sterile, they don't have, you know, the human eccentricities around them. Maybe the art is going to die fairly quickly. That's a little provocative. Stockhausen went on in a distinctive discussion about evolution and art. But now back to the two levels as described in the quote are an important moment in music, not only synth electronic music. Here for the example the invention of well-tempered tuning, tuning and its available effects on the composing should be mentioned as representative for many others. Without doing too long on the history aspect of music, I would nevertheless like to note two essential things. Alongside the further development of compositional procedures, the further development on tone color came to play an increasing important role. And secondly, music was revolutionized by the possibilities of sound storage. Without the record, music concrete would not have come into being, the same applies to the invention of the magnetophone, without which so-called electronic music or tape music, as it was called in the USA at Columbia Princeton University, would not exist. Not to mention the impact on instrumental practice, which was seriously altered by the recording studio experience. At this point, I would like to make a small discretion after the long time I have been involved with electronic music in my life, here are a brief biographical data about myself. I was born in that really small village of Dixit in the Taunus, about 30 kilometers as a linear distance from the monastery of Hildegard of Bingen on the Rhine River. My first conscious perspective of music was church special organ music, which my father played in the small village church. Later, the radio played a big role. I still remember the radio drama very intensively, especially the works awarded by the Society of the War Blind, which we listened into the family circuit. After that, two things very important for my youthful development. <clears throat> The remark of my teacher in grammar school in Itstein, who said to me, there's a crazy guy in Cologne 
who makes music of electricity, with the emphasis on crazy. I think the beginning of the 60s, my music teacher was not an isolated case of the society who couldn't do anything with this kind of music. In any case, this statement provoked me. I was hearing now music for the first time I never had known and heard before. The second important moment was when my family bought a magnetophone, which was the beginning of really my electronic music. I made simple radio plays and sound montages, and later I also made tapes for my band. At this point, I closed a little discretion, but I don't want to leave unmentioned that I was fascinated by the technique of recording sounds that I studied sound engineering alongside my compositional studies. You could say that recording and transforming sounds has never left me until today. I have to go back to the Wikipedia article. The importance of the radio as a medium for the first to achieve political goals and later for entertainment and pave the way of broadcasting of music is a very abbreviated comment on the use of the medium of radio. On the third on the 23rd September of 1926, radio broadcast the first program from the radio exhibition in Berlin. It was a departure in a new area of communication. At very early, the focus was on the diversity and cultural aspects. From 1933 onwards, radio was almost to 100% only a propaganda medium of the Nazi regime. It was first only after 1445 the radio regained the importance it had lost under the fascism, namely a place where political and cultural diversity of the country was represented and a place where new things were sought and developed. Without this new radio, electronic music would not have emerged in Europe. This electronic music should not be instrumental music with other instruments. Here is an example of instrumental music with an electronic instrument representative for many others. To Den Haag wordt door professor Oscar Sala een demonstratie gegeven op het Trautonium. Deze uitvinding van Troutwijn is een melodisch instrument waarvoor de elektriciteit slechts de kracht levert tot het voortbrengen van de toon. De bespeler regelt de stroom en de trillingen en kan deze trillingen in oneindige schakeringen en klankkleuren vervormen. De uitvoeringen die hier te landen met dit instrument worden gegeven staan onder leiding van generaal muziekdirector Zorn, dirigent van het Stedelijk Orkest van Berlijn. Ich hoffe, dass Ihnen das neue Instrument gefallen möge und wir werden uns gestatten, nunmehr einige Proben praktisch vorzuführen. In order to clarify why this music came about in the first place, I need to shed some light on the history. Otherwise, the waking after the Second World War was not conveyed in the culture and society. Electronic music after 1945 from the NWDR, Nordwestdeutsche Rundfunk, was radiophonic music, as Musik concrete, which originated in Paris radio. For music in radio, especially for electronic music, it was a fortune that the Allies decide on 15th September of 1948 at the WAVE conference in Copenhagen to dismantle the waves. Germany received only few powerful medium and long waves. This meant that the German radio stations were more or less voluntarily forced to broadcast their program on ultra-short waves. This meant not only an economical important boost in the demand of the broadcasting and the radio equipment industry, but also a considerable impetus of qualitative and quantitative program innovations at the broadcasters. 
Immediately after the Copenhagen wave plan came into effect at the 15th March of 1950, the Cologne Broadcasting Center began the first regular VHF broadcast from VHF West on 3rd April. This realized a concept of program, a contrast of light music on VHF and serial music on medium waves. This also came closer to the wish of Northland Westphalia to be able to develop programs in Cologne without interference from Hamburg. For the sake of completeness, it should be mentioned that the British military government only renewed its 1948 Broadcasting Act on the 12th of May in 1955, so that the WDR in Cologne became an independent broadcaster. By broadcasting on ultra-short waves, it was also possible to transmit electronic music in high sound quality. Herbert Eimert was the man, was the man of the hour. He did not have to be denazified, as the Ailers called it. He had a clean slate. In the 20s, he studied composition and was thrown out of the compositional class at the Academy of Cologne because he had taken the liberty to write a 12-tone theory. He then studied musicology, worked in radio. After 33, he ended this work in the radio and hibernated as a journalist for a Cologne daily newspaper until 1940. These people were rare, and so he became the head of the musical night program and later on the founder of the electronic studio on the NWDR. And not only that, he was the patron the patron of the whole young generation of composers, as well as the founder of the Darmstadt Summer Courses, which have still survived to this day. It was these people who wanted to initiate something that had nothing to do with the time of 12 years of fascism in Germany. I am shedding a light on the environment so that we can understand why composers came up to the idea to produce music in such an adventurous way. Peshev's approach of exiling sound material from the acoustic environment and drawing music consequences from it is even more much understandable. But to go into the laboratories of the radio measurement technology and borrow their equipment in order to use it for musical purpose is really tough stuff. But it was the only way to distance oneself so radically from the fascist ideas of the Nazi area and the neoclassicistical tendencies that still exist. The same can be observed in the new discovery of abstraction in art. Only a few composers in the 50s and 60s were convinced that electronic music was important. This music on the radio was of course absolutely elitist. Anyone who wanted to work in the studio had to get past the doorman Herbert Eimert and Herbert Eimert carefully ensured that only adherents of the serial composition techniques were allowed into the electronic studio. All those, all those who set to make electronic music were dilettants, Herbert Eimert included. But they were united in the way they composed. They composed serially. But where did the idea making music in the electronic field come from? Where was the place in the radio where this music was produced? A special studio for electronic music had not been set up yet. The two studio technicians, Fritz Engel and Heinrich Schütz, were responsible for the design of radio plays in the WDR. Before they were later employed in IMAT studio, they dealt with concrete material which they transformed. Maybe is there a parallel to Pierre Schaeffer's music concrete? 
Here's a quote of Fred K. Prima from his book Musica Ex Machina. I quote, But from the beginning, even before there was an actual studio for electronic music, Dr. Herbert Eimert had the idea of making electronic sound usable for new kind of music. The immensity of electronic sound field seemed to demand a strict systematics on sounding material from the outset. End of quote. So it was no coincidence that the serial composition technique became the new technique for composing timbre. The punctual style of composing, a punctueller Stil in Deutsch, I don't know if my translation is correct, as Stockhausen and Eimert called it, was particularly well suited as a method for composing timbre with sine waves. At this point, the compositional path forks in relation to music concrete, even though electronic music had its roots in the radio play studio. On Stockhausen's Gesang der Jüngen from 1955 and Herbert Eimer's Epitaph by Kishi Kubuyama for speakers and speech sounds from 1962, concrete sound material is again integrated in the compositional system. The realization process in the studio were very time consuming. Recording sound material from generators onto tape and layering through copying processes, reassembling it through cuts was so extensive that only one composer could work in the studio at a time. So it's not surprising that one and a half years since the studio was founded, only seven small pieces by five composers have been produced. Here I would quote, here would to like quote to quote Fred Freeberg once again. I quote the almost grotesque inefficiency of the new art of thus strikingly demonstrated. One of the five composers would have been able to live of the proceeds of their work for even a month, let alone a one and a half year. In fact, The electronic music is no way to generate artistic creation. End of quote. The instrumental music, the composer writes the score, which the tr is translated into sound by musicians through interpretation. In electronic music, the composer has to realize his pieces himself in the studio. In electronic music, the mistakes that occur in interpretation by musicians should also be avoided. The music should sound as one had imagined it. However, it soon became clear that the form-forming aspects of instruments, as I would like to call it, also play an important role in an electroacoustic studio. At the same time, problems of craftsmanship were not to be neglected in the realization. To create a mix, one often used several tape machines which then had to be operated by several people according to a playing score, like a kind of tape machine ensemble. In this way, experiments were made very early on to automate certain realization processes. Such machines make the realization process easier compounded to the poor tape cutting process. But on the other hand, the special characteristics of such a machine have to be recognized and accepted. As you can see in the illustration, there was a bonus that many work processes were repetitive, and so it was not surprising that materials were glued together to form a magnetic tape loop. Rhythm patterns were also created in this way, in the form of magnetic tape loops, where magnetic tape and non-magnetic tape were stuck together in the form of a rhythmical structure. Thus, continuous material was literally chopped when up when the record was such, when recorded with such a magnetic tube. The envelope was determined by the cutting angle and the magnetic tape. By the changing the tape speed, the meter would be altered. Inspired by this technique, Steve Reich created a piece with the title Come Out to Show Them in 1966, 
the sound material based on a record from a court case against a black U.S. citizen who was beaten up by the police. I took the liberty and compressed the 30 minutes long piece to 50 seconds for this lecture. I had to like open the bruise up and let some of the bruise blood come out to show them. I had to like open the bruise up and let some of the bruise blood come out to show them. Come out to show them, 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 come out to
of them may still be familiar with this analog computer. However, I was very pleased at the end of the 60s when it was replaced by the first scientific digital calculator, the HP 35. Koenig's ideas about automatic work process and also has the purpose of banishing instrumental thinking from the studio. And where can processes be depicted particularly well in analog computer? Because the process in this so-called voltage control system could take place so quickly that a new electronic playing instrument was born that was now indispensable in popular music. An electronic playing instrument operated by a classical diatonic keyboard but was not really wanted in the electronic studio of the 50s. The Synlab you can see here, the development of Volkwang Hochschule together with the Hofschneider Company and the Technical University Berlin, was and is never a playing instrument for the composers at the ISM. I have always said that this is an analog computer and the composer is in front of the system, he is the synthesizer. This is the only way to understand why we meshed digital technology and analog technology at the beginning of the 80s. Slow digital technology, at that time an Apple II computer, controls analog sound synthesis in real time. As early as 1957, probably the most advanced system for hybrid sound synthesis was installed at the Columbia Princeton University in New York. You will hear a short sound example by Milton Babbitt, which he realized on the Mark II analog computer from RCA. <laughs> In the topic of the seminar, I should answer the prediction they were and which come true. Looking at this complex of questions as someone directed concerned, I have to differentiate it between the time of the 50s and the time of the end of the 60s when I was actively started to deal with electronic music. I know the 50s from books and from my teachers. Later, I had my own vision to realize in composition and the use of technology. In those days, the means of production were only accessible in institutions. Apparatus for electronic sound production was so expensive that one could hardly afford it privately. So many people often forced to build their own devices. Many composers, including myself, learned the basics of electronics in this way, this also had a great influence on their compositional thinking. One of the really big visions of Koenigs was the automation of the realization process. Was the process of the automation and realization process. I would like to go one step further. It was the desire, development apparatus for overcome the man manual difficulties to the use of magnetic tape technology in connection with measuring instrument technology. By this I do mean not to, uh, to construct a new playing instrument, the development of new playing instrument based on electronic sound generation. Experience from the serial composition technique to produce that what known from process technology could be representative in so-called analog computers. The definition in that system, the representative of voltage, regardless of whether they are audio, audible or controlling signals, was new. This comes very close to the vision of the music continuum of Stockhausen, described in his essay, Wie die Zeit vergeht, and is still important for today even the transfer to the digital world. The following developments are only representative for others. C-Sound, Super Collider, Maximus B, etc. 
It was always astonishing to me how influential sound storage through magnetic tape technology still is today. Even the magnetophone has long since disappeared. It lives on in the high level of our digital workstations. And it takes the phenomenon even further. Even the old studio now lives on as an extension of the tape machine in form from VST plugins. Finally, a little bit provocative. Apart from the fact that we now simulate everything digitally, we have not come up with much new relation process in electronic music. Even in the Renaissance of analog system in the Euro Rec format, people often only pretend that they are dealing with new analog circuits. In, it's not unusual that behind the knobs and the switches there's only a digital processor. I hope that my comments have raised more questions rather than providing solutions. And I thank you for your attention and look forward for a stimulation discussion among you. Thank you. Hmm? Thanks very much. Hmm. Thank you. Um, we've got yeah, five or ten minutes, I would say, for questions before we proceed with the hmm. next one at 11 o'clock. We're not going to pass the microphone around. We'll try and keep it a little bit more intimate if shouting is intimate, but we don't have to shout. Um, <laughs> we've got microphones around the room, so we don't feel pressure to, to be too loud. Uh, we want to do it. Anyway, let's get, get the person on the way. Who has a question? Please. What was the answer from uh, short call to the question of being humanity? We didn't hear the only way to press the screen. Um, it was a long talk uh, after this question, and he was has not the meaning that this art will die very soon. Uh, the talk is over one and an hour, from the beginning of human beings to the from ne Neanderthal up to the time now, time where we live and what is the position of the arts. It's a nice YouTube video, you can hear it, it's from the beginning of the 70s. So the answer is one hour? It, it, one hour he's talking about uh, this uh, interview. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, Dirk, what about the political aspects uh, of the new media after 45? So this uh, would be a, a, a question, an interesting question. Is it really political or is it uh, pure aesthetics? No, I think it's uh, uh, in, in comparison to, to the music concrete in Paris. Is the electronic music in the Cologne studio a political act at that time to come off of all these neoclassicistical aspects in art to do things really in a way which has no body gun before and that was also the plan of Herbert Einert so he was really radically uh, that only serialist composers come to the studio it was absolutely closed for all the others the changes in the time. But it was at the beginning really a political act. Ahmed Ahmed had really a, a white slate and so he became one of the first. The other guy is Herbert Augstein. He has the, the free uh, political journal, Der Spiegel, den es ja heute auch noch gibt. And uh, there are no so many people which are not, uh, have, a lot of them have to denazify it before they uh, could use uh, only police and uh, um, jurists. Lawyers? Jurists. Lawyers. Lawyers. They have not to be necessified. They uh, would wash a little bit and then...
could maybe I can interject with a little bit of question there. You know, from, from my perspective, I, I perceive, and I think it's largely dictated by the limits of the technology in the early days, but the, there seems to be an antagonism between instrumental and electronic music, which the Stockhausen brief, uh, uh, the question here, uh, illustrates very well. And I perceive that sort of disappeared, not completely, but to a, to a large extent, as we approach the time we're in now, simply because technology makes things a little bit easier, but also many more composers have studied both instrumental composition and electronic composition and mixed the technologies mm -hmm. in their work. However, any fears that were around about electronic music um, maybe taking over music completely and dispensing with instrumental music, they weren't completely unfounded in my view. There were, there were strikes in the 1940s, I think, in the United States, um, uh, rejecting the jukebox because the, the musicians thought they were going to be put out of work by the jukebox, and indeed they were put out of work by the mm -hmm. jukebox to a large extent. So the fears were in some ways grounded. But could you speak a little bit about maybe the fears you perceived, say, in the 60s, and um, how they were resolved or, or not resolved? Yeah, it was at the beginning. Uh, it was a counterpoint to instrumental music and all things which have to do with instrumental music. They make mistakes, they don't like the, the, to play so much notes, it's so difficult and we have done that. I know that to the 70s, mm -hmm. when new music was played here in Falkland, which we had fights uh, mm -hmm. to bring music on that stage. And so it was, uh, from the composer of electronic music, we do our music, this music sound as we want. And we don't want interpretation. Mm -hmm. That was a time period of, I think, eight to ten years. Yeah. And then, when they developed more and more new machines uh, for, uh, for realization of electronic music, they come closer to instrumental music too, especially Stockhausen. Stockhausen was not only a poor electronic composer, he was really competent, mm. but he has always the connection to instrumental music. Mm. Yeah. He composed in, in, in those days, he composed Gruppen, yeah. one of the uh, biggest uh, instrumental pieces at all. Yeah. And on the other hand, he uh, composed pieces like Kontakte für two percussionists and uh, piano player and uh, four channel electronic tape. Yeah. So, so, it, so in other words, the antagonism sort of went back and forth a little bit. So, so there was a rejection, say, of serialism, the complexities that serialism, perhaps the organization of, of tones and, and its precise rhythms, that produced in musicians and also in an audience, yes. which then caused people, particularly uh, like Milton Babbitt, I think, who yeah. speaks about this, with regards to the RCA success, the precision that it afforded. It, it sort of forced composers to step back and say, well, okay, we don't need you. Yeah. <laughs> and then it went back to an audience, uh, perhaps refusing that because of this perceived uh, lack of humanity. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it went ping pong, ping pong yeah. back and forth. That was, that was a difficulty when I said, yeah, I do this thing what you gave me. And when I go a little bit closer to it, I came to the point, I can't say what they want and what happened and what happened not. Uh, the 50s is not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. I started in the 60s. Yeah. And uh, my, I think with every technology development, there we produce new visions, what we can do. And so it's very difficult to say what was the vision and what happened really. Yeah. It's a very really evolutional process. Yeah. So, I, so I changed to the historical aspect, yeah. but I think it's, it's very important. Radio was a really new thing yeah. and it was perverted through the fascism. Yeah. And then it was born again and has a really big function, and we have the best uh, at the moment, no, the best uh, laws on the, on, on the radio contract. Uh, 
we have to thank uh, the BBC and, and, and the British military government that we got uh, this construction of, of radio, where all cultural uh, aspects of a society has to be represented. Interesting though that the, um, the British in their, in their own headquarters in London didn't support electronic music so much, so as much as WDR. Yeah. Yeah. Are, there, are there any questions in, in, in the audience? Because I, if not, I mean, I think that's a really important point to underline, the one you just made now, that um, it's not that there was a vision at the start of electronic music that was then sort of realized, forced through, or, or somehow um, um, uh, assumed uh, by, by various parties around the world and, and put into place, that it was more of a reaction to the technology and the possibilities of the technology that led incrementally almost the development and the incorporation of technology into musical performance and practice. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That, that's what you meant. Yeah, isn't it? but, but uh, in the case of the BBC, it was very important what they did in the 60s. Okay. When recording and when the political movement of the 68 came on, that started at the beginning of the 60s, when pop music became really uh, the music of the young people and was very political, and the BBC did a lot of technologi technological development for that music. Mm -hmm. yeah. The first digital uh, uh, mixing consoles from Neve are born in the BBC. Yeah. Later on, the first Germany. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, you mentioned that the Whereas today, uh, when you work on the laptop, you, you can kind of freestyle and you don't need that exact plan anymore. How did you personally experience that shift? Do you feel like we, you know, we gained something from, from this freedom, mainly? Or do you feel like uh, having an exact plan kind of really helped when you have to work, when you're forced to work that way? Da fehlt mir zu viel am Anfang von dem. Kannst du es ganz kurz nochmal in Deutsch machen? Oh, okay. ähm, am, die anderen haben sie alle verstanden. In, in, der, in, der, in der frühen Studienzeit muss man einen sehr exakten Plan haben, was man, ähm, das, das, ja. also gesagt, was man, was man vorhat, bevor man überhaupt anfängt zu arbeiten. Ja. Und jetzt am Laptop ist das nicht ja. mehr so. Mich würde interessieren, wie das für dich persönlich, wie du das einordnest sozusagen, ähm, ob, ob das eher ein Gewinn ist <lacht> für dich oder ob man auch sozusagen etwas verloren gegangen ist von dieser von dieser Art und Weise zu arbeiten, ähm, mit, mit einer exakten Planung zuerst und dann, dann der Ausführung davon. Innerhalb von elektronischer Musik jetzt gar nicht auf den Instrumentalen. When I was a student, I bought a book, a series, Musik in Geschichte und Gegenwart. It's one, two meters books. For five marks per month, I paid it back over years and years and years. <laughs> I think for 20 years, the last time I took that book, I was so proud. I have this book, and I never have a look and put it in. And I don't think it would kill me if I worked like uh, in the 60s with scissor and things, uh, and the piece wouldn't end. And. Um, It's the same with this calculator, this Rechenschieber of Deutsch, I don't know the English name. It's an analog computer. I have to work with that. And when I started uh, engineering, in that time, the HP calculator came out of the market, costed 2,000 Deutschmark. I worked as, a, as an animal to get that money together to, to wear. 10 times faster in a clausur with that machine and just with, with this rest cheap in and there. So I, I'm missing nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But on the other hand, it's, it's a pretty, uh, I do other music. 
The aspects of uh, electronic music is clean, you can do everything. No, there is a material like a string quartet, and that had form building tendencies. You can't write uh, things for a string quartet, what you do for, uh, for uh, woodwind instruments, and so is electronic music too. So you do music now, which you have in the past, not done. And that's, uh, it's a pity, it's a thing. I'm at the moment very happy to, to merge uh, these things for uh, Bryce, which is uh, payable for me, to have analog instruments with their aspects of analog uh, sound quality and controlling it by fast machines. <coughs> what we try in the in the 80s, but what is at the moment really perfect. I can do that at home and uh, I decide which things are controlled from algorithm and where is the part where I put my hands on it and uh, controlling the algorithmic flow. I think we should stop there and then switch the hands and we need to set up a little bit. So again, thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Thank you.